Connecting to the channel, my name is Massimiliano Tamburrino, I'm from the University of Warwick and today I'm presenting you a joint work with Evelyn Buchvar and Irene Tubikanets from the um, Johannes Kepre University Linz. The work that I'm talking to you about has been recently published on statistics and computing. It is an open access article and we do also have a GitHub code available. I will have a live discussion on the, on the talk on Tuesday and I hope to see you there for having the chance of talking a bit more with more time and more relaxed. So let me start describing you the, the setting of interest. We are considering an n-dimensional SD with a p-dimensional parameter vector out of, well, the, we do not have direct observation of the n-dimensional diffusion process, but what we do observe is a k-dimensional output process that is a function g of the original um, SD process. In particular, we are assuming that the output process admits an invariant distribution. So we have n-dimensional, uh, so we have a diffusion process, but we only observe k components or actually we observe a function of this diffusion process and the observe output process admits an invariant distribution. Our goal is to perform um, parameter inference via discrete time measurements observation of y. Unfortunately we are dealing with complex models that do not have an available or an available or known likelihood so we are dealing with intractable likelihood and for this reason we are considering likely three meters, and in particular, we are focusing on approximate Bayesian computation. What is the idea behind that? Well, I'm going to present you for the sake of simplicity, the simplest accept and rejection ABC algorithm. The idea goes as follows. Imagine to sample a parameter theta i from the prior and condition it on this value. You simulate data that are called synthetic data from the model. Then you compute the distance between some summary statistics of the original reference data and some summary statistics of the simulated synthetic data. Then the idea is to keep theta i as a realization from the posterior, from the ABC posterior, only if the distance is smaller than some quantity epsilon. In particular, we are considering an epsilon a posteriori, so we are dealing with a reference table accept and rejection algorithm that is detailed here in this slide. When you deal with, when we deal with uh, stochastic processes, there are two challenges that immediately arise. The first one is the fact that there is an inner and intrinsic stochasticity in the model. What does it mean? Well, obviously, whenever we generate two different trajectory from the model, from the same parameter value, we have two different realizations, right? And this is what is illustrated here in a blue and red curve. The next natural question is, well, well, the natural question is how do we choose then summaries such that this randomness, this stochasticity is kind of minimized and we get rid of that. The idea will be to map this raw data into something that is fully characterized by theta that is less sensitive to the stochasticity. Intuitively, we would like to get that two data sets are mapped to the same object if and only if the underlying parameter that has been used to generate the trajectory is the same. And as you see in this illustration, this is what happens if we map the data from their row realization to the invariant density and the invariant spectral density. So we really benefit from the fact that the output process admits an invariant density and we estimate that both the invariant density and the invariant spectral density via a, a periodogram smooth estimator. And then you see that in fact, the two trajectory are mapped to the same object because they are generated from the same object, from the same parameter theta. Another challenge that, uh, that arises when dealing with SD is the fact that uh, exact simulations are rarely available. As a consequence of that, you need to rely on numerical methods. And well, we know that not all numerical methods are good or reliable. And it's, it's not only a matter of choosing a time step small enough. And sometimes if you deal with computational based methods, simulation based methods, even choosing delta too small will be infeasible. So what we are interested in 
is actually having a numerical meter that is reliable because in the ABC we need to simulate from the from the model. So we need to have a numerical meter that is actually simulating from the model and most importantly is also able to preserve the key feature of the model. And this is not what happens, for example, when you consider the well-known and very commonly used Euler Mariam numerical scheme. So what you see here in this figure is the true invariant density from a certain from a certain SD model, and that's the blue curve. Then imagine that we simulate this data from a proper structure preserving numerical method, and then we estimate the invariance uh, the invariant density. When doing that, we get this dashed uh, orange line, while if we simulate the data from the euler mariam method and we estimate the invariant density, we get the green line. So this highlights the importance of having a numerical method that is able to preserve the key feature of this model, of the model, in this case, the invariant density. So what we are going to consider are so-called splitting methods, numerical splitting methods. And I want to give you the key idea in a nutshell, and then there will be more to come from Irene. So imagine that we have our n-dimensional SD. We are unable to exactly simulate from that. The idea of splitting consists in three steps. The first step is to decompose the original SD into a set of D n-dimensional explicitly solvable sub-equation that might be either ODs or SDs. Then you need to derive the solution of each sub-equation. And the third step consists in composing the derived solution to construct a numerical solution of the original SD. Thanks to the fact that this, the, the splitting meter is based on composing exact solution from the sub-equation, it has been shown in several examples that the splitting methods are able to preserve the property of the model, they are convergent, and they have nice features. Irene will talk about more on this. Irene Tubikanets will have, um, well, she has a pretty recorded talk on splitting methods for stochastic system with locally Lipschitz drift. And she also have a live discussion on Thursday. And I hope to see you there as well. I will be there. <laughs> okay, so if we combine these two key features, I was trying to stress the importance of choosing summary statistics that incorporate the the SD dynamics that are based on the property of the model, but at the same time, they are less sensitive to the intrinsic stochasticity of the model. So the idea is try to think about what should I choose? What would be a summary statistics such that two different realization are mapped to the same object when the original value, the original parameter used for simulating them was the same. That's the idea behind. And in this case, the statistics that were able, well, that were less uh, sensitive, the summaries that were less sensitive were the invariant density and the variance spectral density. Another key ingredient is to derive reliable numerical methods to really simulate from the, from the model. So if you combine summary statistics based on the property of the model and less sensitive to the stochasticity of the model, and reliable structure preserving numerical method, then you get what we call spectral density based and measure preserving ABC. And here I have a very simple illustration in the case where we have only uh, one parameter. And what you observe here is a horizontal line that is our prior. You have then the blue line corresponding to the ABC posterior that has been obtained under exact simulation. So we imagined, well, not we imagine, we have an example where exact simulation is possible. So the error comes from the fact of um, not knowing the, the likelihood, okay? So in this case, the blue line correspond to the ABC posterior obtained from exact simulation where the data has been generated and then mapped to the invariant density and variance spectral density. And these are the summaries that has been used into the ABC algorithm. If instead of exact simulation, we use a numerical uh, splitting method, well, then the ABC posterior, that is the one obtained from the dashed, dashed orange line, is pretty much overlapping with the blue, blue, with the blue one obtained with uh, exact simulation. While if we rely on Euler method, 
or order Morgan meter with even with a time step as small as delta uh, equal to 10 to the power of minus 3, then you see that the posterior, the ABC posterior is far off the blue line. And what is more important is that it's also far off from the true values, this lambda equal to 20. While the um, ABC posterior base on data that has been simulated from the numerical splitting methods are targeting the true uh, value delta, the true value, sorry, lambda, and actually overlapping with the ABC posterior generated under the exact statistical model. So I hope you find this talk interesting. I hope to be able to share more info and to have a nice chat with you on Tuesday. Uh, if not, for any reason you cannot make it, well, feel free to drop me an email or contact me on Twitter or via, well, whatever you prefer. Um, there is a nice talk, pre-recorded talk given by Irene on uh, splitting methods for um, SD with locally Lipschitz drift. So in case you are curious about this method, feel free to listen to our talk and join the live discussion on Thursday. And well, I hope you enjoyed the talk and I hope to see you soon.